Hey there guys, Ben with Bolton and Pebbles here, and we're back with another video. Today we'll be going over my uh, new kit, or the latest one I've got. The USS Texas BB-35. Um, this was a battleship, I believe, of the New York class. Don't quote me on this. And it served through both world wars, and it is now a museum ship on in Texas. And I believe it has an Instagram page. If if you want to follow that, I'll leave a link down in the description. But it's a 1 to 350 scale, as you can see right there. It has a length of four, basically 500 millimeters. About 100 millimeters of a beam and about 840 pieces. About 100 plus to photo etch, which we'll go into. So, really nice box art. Very stylized. This has a color guide, as you can see here. Comes with different planes. They, they're pure, they're clear plastic, but you can paint them yourself. Sorry guys, I'm so sick, but uh, there's some more stuff, another picture of the thing, here's just kind of showing the above view, and the photo etch, I don't know if it will let me, yeah, there we go, it's, it's a lot of photo etch, but it's all worth it in the end, because it will turn out to some fantastic quality, this paragraph I love because if you actually take a look at it you can tell that Trumpeter's not a f an American first company it's a I believe in Chinese or Japanese com company you can leave you can correct me in the comments but uh like the line she is the United States Navy 34 years into the war just maybe not um and then again, for the United States, USS Texas, more is the first U.S. battleship fitted with anti-aircraft artillery. Like, this is the thing. It's, I'm not going to mock, because, I mean, you know, if I try to translate my English into that, you know, it'd be a bit of a thing. But this is just kind of a warning thing. There we go. We'll take a look at the instructions, because it's, it's a pretty hefty instructions. Comes with a painting guide and then a paint chart. Um, I'm not quite sure what brand I'm gonna use for paints. I'd like to use Tamiya, but if you take a look under Tamiya, they don't have a deck blue or like a navy blue, or maybe they do, but it wasn't included in the thing, so we'll figure it out later. But yeah, that's the uh thing. Just kind of gives you a run through of all the different deck parts, and yeah, you got to see my uh, nice Star Wars pajamas I am wearing because I'm very bad at using my phone as a camera. Is why I'm okay. So it starts out with you prop up the hull with stabilizers, then you put the deck on. This is one of those, usually I would build ships in the order they tell me to, but when you see the amount of photo etch, which, I mean, this alone, you have to build it out of order. But here's the propellers, and even though the, the amount of detail, and I'm going to pull out one side of the hull just for, I know I'm kind of, I'm going to show the parts eventually, but since you can see the detail on this thing, the amount of detail they, they've put in, I'm going to zoom in just a bit, because, I mean, it's just amazing how much detail you can get in one piece, and it's, it's amazing the amount of detail, even without the photo watch, but yeah, here's some different designs, some stairs, you know, different things. You got some guns, some 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume this right here, this is a like a radar. Those are obviously, I believe, the five inch guns. But feel free to correct me. And this is anti aircraft capability guns. So, so yeah, and this is a lot of what I need to get, and I mean to get it, but I haven't gotten it yet. Is a pin vise because it helps drill holes and everything. I need a new knife blade. I need a lot of stuff. I have a GoFundMe for this project, and I'll link it in the description below. So, you know, you don't have to donate any money, but if you'd like me to do a, a series with this ship and, uh, you know, everything, I'll do, I'll continue to do that. The money doesn't have anything to do with me continuing this. I'll do this anyways. If you want me to do updates on how the building's going, I'll do that. But also, yeah, feel free to donate some money to the thing, so... This, so I can get an airbrush machine, so this can be done properly, and, uh, the aftermarket kit, which gives me wooden decking and all the other fun stuff, so. Here's just some more building. Anyways, shameless self-promotion aside. This is gonna be a long video, which is fine by me. Here's just some more bridge stuff. You should see near the end, there's this part where you're putting on 18 billion parts, and it's amazing. So here's just some more. And also, I thought I'd make a video reviewing this because no one really has before. And it's actually kind of a shame because this is a cool kit. And yet, all the reviews on... There's one in Russian, and then there's just like too many videos of it fully finished. So maybe I can get famous on YouTube doing model stuff with this kit. So I'd love to be a model building YouTuber. Like, Andy's Hobby Headquarter, give him a follow. Fantastic, uh, hobby enthusiast. His YouTube channel is fantastic. I love watching the videos in their, my spare time. Doesn't post as often as I'd like to, but I mean... I follow John Tron, who doesn't post for 11 months, so I mean... It's all to who wants it. But you can already start to see the kind of photo etch. Like, and, and here's a question I have for anyone who knows, who did work, has worked with a lot of photo etch. How do you bend it properly? I know there are photo etch bending tools, but is there anything besides those that I can get that can help me? Again, you guys can help me in the comments, or I may just ask the model builders Reddit, so I can... Yeah, here's some more photo etch. More photo etch. If I do the tower, and that's just putting that on. Here's, and this is cool, and I'll show you guys later. You see these uh, chains here? Yeah, these are actual chains. They give you actual proper metal chains for it, so. That's, I, I applaud Trumpeter for giving practically all. All the photo etch, all the fun stuff you would need. Here's what I'm talking about. Here's the start of putting like 18 billion things on the back, the middle and the back. So, and then you have some stuff there, and then you have a bunch of the five inch guns, I believe. What I'll probably do is at the start of this video, do a bit of a history lesson. About the Texas. Because. She's a ship with a lot of history. And it feels just. Not right to. Not give you guys enough information. But this is the step I'm talking about. With the grand total of like a hundred thousand different things. And being put on the back. So. This isn't going to be my okay, usual crack it out in about a week, get it done. This is, about, I'm going to say, a good month project. Knowing me, I'll get it done in a day and, like, ruin it all. But, I mean, suppose it should be. Okay. Here's some more stuff. Putting more guns on. I believe this had either 14 or 15 inch guns, but 
Not a hundred percent sure on that one. Yeah, this is. Here's the crane. Even the guns have a lot of photo etch on them. Like they have photo etch gun baskets and. Here's the crane that goes. It's just a phenomenal kit. Lots of photo etch. This is a photo etch lover's dream. I may just get gun battles and metal decking. Probably the only stuff I would get instead. But yeah, here's yeah, the last step of the instructions is putting that on. So that's the instructions. Now we'll get through the hall and to the other parts. Okay. Here's the hall. I already showed you the detail, but I'll go over it again. I go look at the detail, which I mean you have to, you're watching the video, so. So much detail, and it's the same on the other side. There's no real change here. Uh, this is some parts here. Here's some of the bracing for the hull, along with other parts. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic because of the fact I'm not going to probably build this for a few weeks, and I'd rather not have... You know, parts everywhere. Even though they're pretty secure, it's just easier. Here's some decking. Some more parts. Some more stuff. Those are the things, the anti-aircraft parts for the gun that I just showed. Here's a bunch of different gun stuff. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll use the US uh, Texas as like a backdrop so that you can get a look through. Yeah, there's stuff. Some mast gun turret bases. Here's some more pieces. It has like 20,000 sprues when it's all said and done. But, I mean, that's because you need a lot of parts to make a quality model like Trumpeter is provided. The last Trumpeter model I had, I got frustrated with and never really finished. And when I went to go rebuild it another day, I couldn't find it. So, yeah. Here's the uh, gun turrets. Let's see if I can stretch the plastic. Yeah, there we go. Those are the gun turrets. Here's a bunch of fun stuff. Turrets, other small parts, whatever you need. Life rafts. I may have to get an aftermarket tech because I'm not a big fan of how the life rafts look. Here's the barrels. They're actually drilled out, which you can see there. But I, I'm very tempted to go metal just because... There is something to say about the metal gun barrels that just can't be replicated with, um, here's just another sprue of turrets, so we don't need to see that. Here is the big base, so, and then on the opposite side, it has a few of the pieces for the, uh, uh, control towers, bases, yeah, so that's that, you have the decking, which has incredible detail, you can, it actually shows the lines on this, other than the Tamiya kit, what I think, I, I've built before, yeah, like my Missouri does, it has deck detail, but not quite as noticeable as this, yeah, so that's the back, and then here's the back part, which has where all the stuff goes on. So much detail, and that's all you can really ask for as a model builder, is to, for detail. Here's more just deck, like parts of the deck. Here is the, uh, I think it's OSU Fighters. People who know more about planes will be able to tell me what planes they are. I think it says on the color guide. Uh, 
Maybe not, but... Actually, yes, it does. I know where it shows me, and it's on the instructions. Yes, it's the OS2U1 fighters. And they're molded and clear, and you can paint them afterwards. Here's some more decking as well. So that, that's that. Here's the decals, which are a lot harder to see than you think they would be. And here's where the the the, the joy of the kit comes with about four sprues when all said and done of just photo etch. So here's different railings, all sorts of stuff. That's just one side. That's a small sheet. And on the opposite side, you have the uh, plane launcher. You have some radar. Some engine grills. Not engine grills. Uh, boiler grills. You have all sorts of just lines of photo etch. And then you have another thing of photo etch. I'll take the one below. Yeah, no, that's the, uh, more photo etch, more radars, more everything. Uh, the cranes. And here's where I'm really impressed. I, you know, I was talking about it earlier. This is the metal chains they provide for the anchors. So I'm very impressed with Tamiya that they provided that. If I'm gonna guess, those are the gun shield turrets. If I can count, two, fours. Yeah, that's a few of the gun turret shields, I think, for the f some of the anti-aircraft and normal batteries. But yeah, that's when it all is said and done. The end of the review part, or, well... I'll probably do a quick snippet where I compare the um, Texas to both the Tamiya and 1 to 350 Bismarck and Missouri. So, for now, uh, it's time for me to rock and roll on out. And this comes the uh, review to other sort of 350 chips. So, as you can tell, obviously, here's the Bismarck I'll show. I'll show off my Bismarck, because I never really showed off the finished version. This is after I painted it up a bunch. It was actually a pretty cool experience. Looks pretty good. But here's how the uh, bit, the Texas compares. I mean, obviously, it was never going to be as big, because it's a ship built way before Bismarck. Bismarck, I think, finished was built late 30s. This was built early 1910s, so... Before 1910, at least, I believe. So, you know, it's not going to be definitely the same. So that's just the kind of width. And we'll, we'll do from the back here. I'll try to keep the... Uh, there we go. I'll just try to show you the width. They're definitely... It's definitely... A, a wide, a rather wide ship, but that's just the way it was designed. So that's the uh, Bismarck, and we'll just keep showing you. And then we'll go to what, in about thirty years' time, what would be designed, and then eventually, even later on, would be designed in the USS Missouri, nineteen ninety one. So. As I'll show again, just the length difference. So yeah, that's... And again, I'll show off the Missouri that I've put a lot of work into. It turned out pretty good, I think, so... But yeah, way wider. You can certainly tell the that Missouri was built as a fa fast battleship because of its sleek, slender design instead of... Like with the Texas here, where it's just wide. 
like it's a pretty wide ship so and obviously this isn't quite comparable since this version of the Missouri is from 1991 so you can tell from like the different stuff on it that it's definitely a more advanced ship but that's just wanted a sense of comparison but yeah that's in the end for the uh comparison portion after this i'll do a quick history uh on the texas so i'll be back okay so this is the historic part also this is the advantage of having two monitors set up so i can show you photos of the texas while i read some history so this is from the texas uh park where the texas is uh Located. Battleship Texas is the last remaining battleship that participated in both World War I and II. Over her service life, the Navy repeatedly outfitted the ship with cutting edge technology. Fate spared Battleship Texas as she fought in two wars. Now she is fighting against survival age. Survival against age and rust. Power the U.S. Navy commissioned USS Texas on March 12, 1914. She was the most powerful weapon in the world, a complex production of industrial nation emerging as a force in global events. In 1916, the USS Texas became the first U.S. battleship to mount anti-aircraft guns. She was also the first with con to control gunfire with directors and rangekeepers. These early computers increased firing accuracy. In World War I, the USS Texas joined the 6th Battalion Squadron of the British Grand Fleet early in 1918. Her duties included laying an North Sea mine barrage, responding to German high sea fleets maneuvers, and helping protect, helping prevent enemy naval forces from cutting Allied supply lines. Late in 1918, she escorted the German fleet to surrender Anchorage. We'll skip. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll do the retool chip. In 1925, the Navy opted to modernize USS Texas instead of scrapier. This meant converting the ship to run on fuel instead of coal. Tripod masts and single stacks re replaced the state ship's cage masts and two smokestacks. Torpedo blisters add another layer of protection to the ship's waterline. The USS Texas re received one of the first radars in the U.S. Navy in 1939 with new anti-aircraft guns, fire control, and communication equipment. The ship remained an aging but powerful asset in the U.S. Navy fleet. Yeah, and I'll just, we'll do some, we'll show you World War II. Here's, that's a terrible, uh, there we go. That's it in World War II, and then we'll stay on that for now. Okay. The USS Texas became the flagship of the U.S. Atlantic Fleet before World War II. She had a close call in 1941 while on new, new, neutrality patrol. German submarine U-203 U-203 had the ship in its sight and asked permission to fire. Adolf Hitler eventually denied permission to engage the ship or any U.S. ship. Fate spared the battleship again when Japanese forces bombed Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. She was safe in Maine. The United States entered World War II soon after. Sure is lucky. Way luckier than I am, ever am. During the war, the USS Texas fired on Nazi defenses on Normandy on D-Day, June 6, 1944. Shortly afterward, the German coastal defense artillery near Sherbert hit the ship twice. The first shell exploded, injuring 12 and killing one. This was the only combat fatality ever aboard USS Texas. The second shell hit the ship but did not explode. The Na Navy deactivated this lucky shell and returned it to the ship as a good luck charm. After repairs, the battleship and shell Nazi positions in southern France were transferring to the Pacific. There, she let gunfire support and anti-aircraft fire to the landing on Iwo Jima. And that's just kind of a history. So yeah, this and that's just the gist. There is an Instagram account. Hold on, this is on uh, USS Texas. Yeah, I know. Low budget. Yes. I knew there was. It's called Battleship Texas. I genuinely suggest you give it a follow. Because, I mean, they actually post stuff of the ship and they do all sorts of fun 
things. Like, let's see the story today. Never mind. Come on. Well, this is where I have to quickly do all the fun stuff. Sorry about this, guys. This is going fantastic, my man. Sorry for the black screen, man. I probably won't cut it because I won't be able to because I'm working off my phone. So. Let me believe a couple of these. Oh, no. Okay. So, here's, I'll, I'll ch change it this way for a moment. So, there's that. Yeah, and that's the gist of, and here's the, uh, GoFundMe. So far, no money, but, I mean... I only posted it last night, so I'm not too worried. I recommend you guys take a look at it. You don't have to, you know, do anything for it, but I'm just, you know, suggesting if you can, donate. Make sure that I can do this. If not, not the end of the world. But it's time for me to rock and roll on out.